right? What if we really are early? And, and, and what, if life is, is very rare, then I think it's a, a dire responsibility to not die on this rock. Mm. And I think, I think there is a serious risk of us dying on this rock. Should we take seriously Elon Musk's claim that we need to go to Mars to find an alternative to Earth, however inhospitable? I find that an absurd suggestion. And I'll tell you why. Because the amount of money it would take to terraform Mars, to, and it's all very hypothetical and theoretical, we really don't know how to do it, uh, we could save the Earth. <laughs> And I just don't understand if we, what do we do? Wreck the earth and then go to Mars so we can wreck it? I mean, I, I, I've been involved with NASA and heard people give these talks. They get very excited. Yeah, it would be exciting. If we can save the earth, then let's go make Mars hospitable. But, that, but we don't have any, uh, shall we say, good uh, account of how to do that. And unintended consequences are always a risk with our, I told you, we. My, my climate scientist friends say we don't understand. There are all kinds of climate anomalies, uh, uh, atmospheric anomalies that they don't understand. So we're going to be able to go and create an atmosphere in Mars. Uh, and as I said, the expense would be enormous. So I just think that if we really want to eventually someday make Mars habitable, let's save the Earth first. Excellent. Would you agree with that, Matt? Why terraform Mars when we could terraform Earth first? I, I totally agree. I think um, we're, we're, we're rapidly trying to Marsiform Earth. I, I think mm -hmm. in, terms of, <laughs> in terms of resource investment, yeah. um, it's not something that we shouldn't think about or even develop technology, but you know, it, it is a, a monstrously difficult uh, thing to do to, 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 to really terraform Mars. And it may not be possible. It may not be possible to protect whatever atmosphere we managed to build there, which we would have to do by getting out and sending comets to hit Mars. Actually, there was a lot of water found below the surface of Mars. So either way, you know, Mars has no magnetic field. It, it, it once had an atmosphere that was ablated away by the solar wind and that would just happen again. So we'd have to re-terraform, re-terraform. Um, I, I really do think that thinking about humanity's long-term place beyond Earth is worthwhile. And, and we, should, we should carefully consider that and, and, and work towards it. But in terms of it being, in terms of investment and, and sort of the lever arm to the future of, of good we can do, um, it, it's about, I, I guess, bolstering our own survivability and viability as a species going forward. Uh, and hmm. you, you don't have to, you know, do one thing to the exclusion of all other things. You know, you, you, we absolutely should have ongoing surveys for, for signals that could, that could be technological in origin. I was more excited than anyone about the, um, the Breakthrough Starshot program to send a, a wafer-sized camera or, or a train of them by light sail uh, to the nearest star and to, to actually take photos of that thing, which might be habitable. Uh, we, we would see the life and it, it's a huge investment, but, but so worth it, I think. Uh, so you don't have to do exclude something just because it's not the, the best investment, but you do have to think about the investment. You do have to think about how much of our national global scientific budget we're gonna put in search for life versus search for the origins of the cosmos, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, well, I actually chaired the scientific board that designed Starshot, which you Fantastic. failed to mention. Well, thank you yeah, for that. Thank you. It's awesome. Uh, but um, what I wanted to say with respect to Mars is, yeah. first, we cannot survive on the surface because there are cosmic rays that would damage our body. We will need to get to caves underneath the ground. And, you know, we started in prehistoric caves, <laughs> protect us from the rain, and we might actually end up, if we, if we ever go to Mars, in, in caves. Uh, but um, the point is, you know, Mars started just like Earth. It had liquid water on the surface. There was an atmosphere, and then it lost it a couple of billion years ago. It's possible that life started on Mars first because it was a smaller body, and it cooled faster. Smaller bodies cool faster because they have more surface per unit volume. So um, 
And then life was brought to earth by a rock that was chipped off the surface of, I mean, we know of such rocks from Mars that arrived to Earth. If so, we are all Martians. And uh, what Elon Musk is trying to do right now is basically go back to his childhood home. <laughs> um, that's not very impressive because these <laughs> tiny mi uh, astronauts, these microbes in the you know, interiors of rocks uh, were the first to, to traverse the, the, the... They've already done it. <laughs> they've already done it, yeah. But uh, I think in terms of putting humans in space, the, the, it would be much better to build a, an artificial platform because you can then um, choose the distance from the furnace, the sun, as it changes over time. You know, the sun will brighten up and, and um, you know, you just want to choose the optimal distance from the furnace or build your own nuclear reactor. You know, we shouldn't rely on existing bodies just because nature made them. If we go to space, let's make our own habitat. But you're, you're talking about changes that are billions of years in time scale, I mean, or, or hundreds of billions of years in time scale. We have to take first steps, and the first steps should be achievable within, you know, political time scale. Yeah, so, so the space station, um, if you read the news, uh, existed. And all I'm talking about is another space station uh, but of, uh, that provides humans with uh, a, a much better habitat uh, for, for, for them to sustain normal life on that. Rather than going to Mars, have a space station that supports uh, us in a, in a better way. I've got one more question to put to the panel, and I think this is one for a philosopher, Carol. If the human race became a multi-planetary species, what consequences would this have on ourselves and our place in the universe? Big one there for you. <laughs> Wow. As an Anne League philosopher, that's a hard one to answer. <laughs> um, so um, I don't think we know what consequences that would have. We were a multi-spacefaring, uh, and that's far in the future, by the way, I think. Uh, we would have to be different. We would have probably genetically modified ourselves so that we could tolerate maybe greater exposure to radiation uh, and Right now, it's one of the big problems, even in the space station, is that people who are, spend much time in the space station, even a year, have all kinds of physical problems. They have problems with their bone density, they have problems, there's even now evidence of early onset Alzheimer's. So if you want to go to Mars, you might as well start eating the worst kind of food and you're going to have the same effect here on Earth. So. Our bodies are not are designed to um, be basically live on Earth. And that's a big problem. Even on Mars, it has lighter gravity. But even on a space station, you're going to have to, um, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to get a space station that provides us with all the things that we need to survive and last very long. So I think genetic engineering would happen. And who knows how they would engineer us? I mean, who knows what we would be like if they were engineered? Uh, some people think that it would be the end of religion. It might be exactly the opposite. People would become more religious. I d it's very hard to predict that, except to say that to become a spacefaring uh, uh, species, I think we're going to have to um, become different uh, physiologically. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Would you agree with that, Avi? Yes, uh, but actually I have no problem with sending technological kids to space uh, in the form of AI systems that uh, are equipped with 3D printers so they can produce uh, whatever they need out of the raw materials of the destination. And um, I don't think that, you know, speaking about, uh, I mean, in England, uh, Darwin uh, uh, had a very important insight about natural selection, and that was on the surface of a rock, uh, right? So we are not designed to survive in space, and we, sh we shouldn't expect us to, to fare well under the, the hazardous conditions there, and therefore, I think we should produce technologically those astronauts that will explore space for us. They will send postcards back to us, and we would perish on this rock. I mean, I don't, frankly, I don't, you know, we are not meant to last forever, you know, and uh, as long as we have someone maintaining our legacy in the form of robots with AI that go places and basically say that we existed, you know, I, f I would feel as honored as I am watching my daughters do well. Mm. Interesting. What would you have to say uh, about that? Multiplanetary species, how will it change us? So it's not inevitable that it'll happen. I, so, so Avi likes the idea of exploring space because of the neighbours we'll meet. 
I find it more inspiring to, to pursue that goal if there are no neighbours, because I see that as a, an enormous responsibility. Like, what if, what if the, the ancient ones that they talk about in a future galactic civilization was us? Right? What if we really are early? And, and, and what, if life is, is very rare, then I think it's a, a dire responsibility to not die on this rock. Mm. And I think, I think there is a serious risk of us dying on this rock. Um, and I think the way to get off the rock isn't to put people on Mars in 20 years. I think the way to, to get off this rock in the right way is to work towards that as a long-term goal. What happened when people left Africa and sp spread around the world. We created many, many warring nations and tribes. It, it'll be much worse in space where the long generations, long light travel time means that there, there is no communication. We will have to change for every planet that we're on. We'll adapt and we'll adapt ourselves and we'll become many different species. But that spread out humanity that we seed It'll make a huge difference the manner in which we see it. Like, what, what are we when we begin that process? You know, the, there are two ways to approach science. One... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.